I'm going down to the drugstore Buy a big old skinny yarn I'm gonna knit me a kitten Even if you don't give a darn Good morning. Welcome to this episode of the We Are Yarn podcast. My name's Amanda and I will be your hostess today. Thank you so much for joining me in my craft room. The babe is napping. He just, we just had nap lift off. So I'm going to try to get this done as quickly as I can. Um, it is Monday, May the something. 22. It's May the 22nd, 2017. I'm podcasting to you from the beautiful East Tennessee region. It's not very beautiful today. Uh, it was very hot, uh, very humid on Saturday. Uh, we tried to go to Dollywood. We did go to Dollywood and it was a bad plan. Um, fun was still had. It was just not as much fun as it could have been. Yesterday, Sunday the 21st was rainy and gross. Today uh, it's cloudy and cool, but that's okay. Um, a friend and I are going to take our wee ones to the zoo later after nap is completed, so I'm pretty excited about that. Um, yeah, let me tell you what we're doing. I am, I wanted to point out, I am still in the craft room, but I admire all of these podcasters with these beautiful backgrounds that are very crisp and clean, and I don't have that anywhere in my house, um, except in front of the curtain that hangs in front of the closet in my craft room. So I thought I'd try that today, see how it goes. I'm a little bit warm. It was cool. It's getting warmer. Let me take that off. All right, so I have three projects to show you today. <coughs> I'm going to try very hard to stay in that 15 minute limit that I've been trying to set myself, but I can't promise you anything. Let's see how it goes. First off, I'm going to show you a project that you've seen um, several times. Well, maybe once or twice. Uh, this is the Celadon shawl. My copy's getting very beat up <laughs> by... Um, Oh, Ambo O'Brien. I love her patterns. They're also pretty. I'm actually in the process of planning my next Ambo O'Brien shawl. <laughs> um, so, the Celadon, which uses one skein of a solid tonal, and then a gradient set. So, my solid tonal, as you have seen, is the um, Hedgehog Fibers. This is Sporty Merino. I did not realize it was sport when I bought it. I thought I was buying fingering. Um, but it's so squishy and soft. And I'm, I just, I love this base. It was amazing to work with. But this is the, this is a brown colorway with a not safe for little ears word in it. And then I moved on into my gradient. This is why I wanted to show it to you. Color one. Color two color three and I have moved I'm halfway through color four now so I'm I'm really 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 excited with this it's pretty um I don't want to say mindless knitting it's pretty um autopilot knitting you just have to think at the end of the rows about whether or not you're going to increase row or decrease row or not and so um it's just zooming right along for me and this is on my um a set of fixed knitters prides uh, on a US4. There they are. Doo -doo -doo. And I have my stitch markers and progress keepers are just some that I made for myself. I got in this kick where I was making a bunch of stitch marker project keeper or progress keeper type deals out of earring backs <coughs> several years ago. And I went hog wild and made all sorts of them. And I'm pretty certain three out of every four stitch markers I own are some of the. <laughs> Gotta get my coffee in before the zoo, guys. Alright, my next project 
is living in my Whimsy Stitches bag. I bought this for myself for my birthday. I had it in my Etsy cart since what, February, probably. And then, it, because it's a um, St. Patrick's Day theme, after St. Patrick's Day, towards the end of April, uh, Rick put it on sale. <clears throat> so I purchased a um, one of his see-through bags. I love, love, love see-through bags. I'm learning that it probably is my favorite type of project bag. See-through bag. And um, it's huge for my Fives Game project. So this is, I'm going to be showing you my starting point by Hohi Locatelli. I also got a um, Notions pouch to go with it. Anyway, I'm going to be showing you my starting point by Hohi Locatelli. Clue 2 came out Friday. Um, <clears throat> I'm still not even halfway through Clue 1. <laughs> So, I'm pretty certain everybody's probably seen Clue 1. Um, if you haven't, you don't want, and you want to be, don't want to be spoiled, you know, jump ahead, maybe five minutes, knowing how chatty I am about things. Um, let me show you my yarns, though. I did make a decision. Believe it or not. My color number one is this silver gray. This is a, I believe, a Merino Tinsel blend. Yeah, here we go. From Daisy Knits. Uh, this is her, yeah, Merino Tinsel 50-50. My one concern with this is that this is the only one that has this high, this low a content of wool, and I'm nervous about when I go to block my shawl, stole, whatever we're calling it, wrap that it's not going to quite do the same as the other <sighs> colors, but I've chosen it, I'm going with it, not changing my mind, we're doing it. Okay, the next is, um, here it is, uh, it's Color Wheel Yarn in her Caribbean Sea colorway. Oh, it's this blue. This is Superwash BFL in nylon. Tough sock is what she calls it. <laughs> Color number three for me. This is the one that started that... This is the color that I worked this all this around. Um, and this is a Zen Garden Glitter Sock in the Clay Sand colorway. There it is. So it's merino cashmere nylon. Beautiful. It doesn't list the um, Stellina in there, the sparkle. So there's probably just, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. So Hohe had made the suggestion that when you choose your colors, to choose colors that you will wear because you're going to want to wear this. So I tried to go more neutral and just use this as my pop of color. My color number four is black. This dyer is now defunct. I wish Mercedes would um, die again, but I don't think that's in the cards for her. So this is um, Silver Spoon from Kitchen Sink Dye Works. Merino Silk Nylon Real Silver Fibers. This is the Edgar colorway from her. Just gray, black. And... Finally, last but definitely not least, my color number five is this beautiful shade of copper from Gal's Art. And this is her MYS 622. So it's 60% merino, 20% yak, 20% silk. And it's so nice to work with. All of these yarns are amazing to work with. So it has been a lot of fun. I'm going to get this. I ended up not using this. So I need to get it out of my back here. Uh, also, because um, Rick is amazing, he sent me a needle minder that I have not used yet, and I should now. After I show you my yarns, 
or after I show you my project, I will be squeezing my little needles in there. So let me return all this to the bottom of the bag. There we go. Now then. Okay, if you don't want to be spoiled, look away. But this is how those colors play together. How fun is that? I'm going to be completely honest. I sort of wish I had gone for the no eyelets. When I stopped and read what the no eyelets version was, it's pretty much all garter stitch. And I kind of wish I had done that. And just had that interesting texture with the blue. The blue is the only one that doesn't really have its own shimmer. So I think having that extra texture with the blue would have been nice. Um, but since I've already done the lace and eyelets and all, we're going with it. But um, I just started the second half. This where my second set of silver hit is starts the second half of the first half of the glue. So there we are. Back a little bit. I'm cutting my own head off. But that's it. I am pleased as punch with how these colors are playing together. I was honestly very, very nervous after. I did not start until I saw a couple of, okay, so I downloaded it, I started reading through it, and then I read Break Yarn, Break Yarn, Break Yarn, and I got nervous, guys, because this is, you know, Kitchen Sink Dye Works, she hadn't been dying, gosh, in years. I've had this since, when was the first Smoky Mountain Fiber Arts Festival, 2010, maybe? I've had this a long, 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 long time, and it's very, it's very precious in my stash. <laughs> and I had to, and my Gales Art MYS, I had to give myself permission to use these yarns in this pattern. And then when I started reading Break Yarn, Break Yarn, Break Yarn, Break Yarn, I was like, oh, but they're my preciouses. So what I did is I waited until other people had completed the clue. And we're posting pictures in the spoiler thread. And I visited the spoiler thread. <clears throat> and when I visited the spoiler thread, I actually did a little bit of rearranging. I swapped my colors two and five so that the blue would land where it does and the copper would land where it does. And I'm really pleased I did that. Also, um, I was starting to get nervous that it was going to be really dark because I was looking at other people's and um, it looked like with the colors they had chosen they were all coming out real dark and um, Hohe's I believe looked very light um, maybe not hers maybe someone else's I don't know but it was very light and that's and I really liked that but I decided that these were the colors I had chosen. I was going to stick with it and go with it. I was not going to, there was no more waffling on it. We were going to do it. And it's much lighter and brighter than I had expected. I think I expected my variegated to be, to read much, much darker than it does. So I'm just over the moon with it. Now these stitch markers, Progress Keepers, were given to me for my birthday by my dear sister-in-law Holly. Um, they're little glass beads that look like ladybugs. She made several sets for me with the earring backs and um, I keep trying to tell her that she needs to open an Etsy shop with stitch markers. I'm just saying, but she won't do it. So another birthday present um, I got several dollars to spend at um, the local yarn shop, the Hook and Needle. So I got myself some Likey Interchangeables of the Driftwood. And they are amazing, guys. I love them. I love them. Um, they're to replace <laughs> my Cubics that have gone missing somewhere. I don't know if they're in the house or in the world, but they are gone. And now my needles 
are happily positioned in my needle case. What do you guys think about it? I also stopped <laughs> because you guys know I'm a lace knitter. I love knitting lace, but I do much better from a chart. And so I stopped and I charted out that little lace bit. It's really easy lace, but I like to be able to just glance down and see where I am and have that visual. So that's my starting point. Um, I'm really super pleased with it. Um, it just, I was afraid that because it was all words and not any charts, that it was going to take a lot more brain power. It takes more brain power for me to work out, um, to work off not a chart, to work off just the written out directions. Oh, I missed one. Um, but yeah, so that's that. Finally, I wanted to show you one more thing. I did get, um, pretty... Motivate, not motivated. I was inspired. When I went in my closet, I was looking for something. I don't know. And um, I have just like, I have all my real pretty yarn over there, all my special yarns. I have most of my acrylics tossed up in this closet. And um, I was going in there for something and was reminded that I have quite a bit of this now discontinued soy wool silk. It's Patton's SWS in the stripes. I have this color which is natural plum and I have another color which is blues. I don't know maybe that's even the name of it. Blues. I don't know. So I pulled out my eye hook. It's a worsted. I pulled out my eye hook and we, I was in here because my baby likes to come in here and he just runs around pointing at things right now. <laughs> it's very cute. Um, he has one of my plastic notions keepers that um, I put a couple of stitch markers in so it rattled and he gets so excited he comes in here and shakes the thing and runs around, points the things, and jumps on the couch and off again. Anyway, but this book was laying out. <clears throat> Beyond the Square Crochet Motifs, 144 Circles, Hexagons, Triangle Squares, and Other Unexpected Shapes by Edie Ekman. And Isaac was flipping through it, looking at the pictures, pointing at things. And um, he came across this, and I liked it. And then I remembered my soy wool silk stripes. And so now I have a hexagon. Isn't that nice? I think it turned out pretty good. Um, so I'm going to be knitting all of my soy wool silk up into one of these bad boys. And um, I think I'm going to use the join as you go method and make a um, blanket. Well, you know what? The join as you go method maybe not work won't work. Let me tell you why. It's not going to work because I have no idea how many squares I'm going to be able to make. So I'm not going to know what kind of layout I can have with it. So I'm going to have to join them at the end. And that's okay. I can do join as you go. Like I can <sighs> Hmm, what I'm probably going to end up doing is maybe finding a D stash or um finding an acrylic style singles at the Michaels or Joann's or Hobby Lobby or something and putting a border on all these. That'll be good. Since it's going to be two different colors, I think finding a border that brings it all together, I think that'll be a good plan. And so when I put the border on, I'll join as I go. Um, yeah, and then I'm planning on uh, donating it to a charity in my area for a silent auction. So, no time frame on that. This is a when my child is running around like a loon because he 
Because he's so skinny. He's like 90th percentile in height and like 25th in weight. And it's not because we don't feed the boy. He eats like crazy. But he, all he does, this is his play. He runs all through the house. Up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down. He just, he won't stop. <laughs> and when he does stop, it's to read. And then we're pointing at things. And we're pointing at words and things. And we're learning. And now we're running again, running, running. Oh, now we gotta we gotta build a tower, <laughs> one block at a time in between running. <laughs> it's, he's so tiring, but so precious. He's so funny. But that's all I have for you. I'm sorry that um, I missed last week recording, but my work schedule has been a little crazy. You even th talking about my work schedule is making me just yawn. Um, but I think we're getting back on track this week. So, um, well, no, I take that back. I signed up for several extra shifts. Mm. We may not be getting back on track. We're getting close to being back on track. But I'm at 20 minutes now, so I'm going to let you guys go. I hope you have a fabulous week. I hope that all of your crafting turns out as you planned. I hope if you are participating in the Mystery Knit Along, you're having a lot of fun doing that. I um, do want to throw out there, I'm tossing around in my head an idea for a knit along. So um, it'll probably be one of those long term, like three month deals. And um, yeah, but I'm working on that. I'm working, I want to get it all ironed out before I give it to you guys to play with. So in the meantime, Happy knitting, happy crocheting, happy spinning, and I will see you in a weekish. Bye, guys. I just can't wait to finish. I got the kitten knitting blues. No, I just can't wait to finish. That's why I got those kitten knitting blues. <laughs> <laughs>